good job. Stay home 
fearful other guests are coming in and filling their spots, and that's fine. You know, maybe one day all this junk will be gone and everybody will be able to be in here. If that happens, we are going to need a new building. So I'm praying that you'll pray about that new building, okay, and what the Lord could do through that. We're going to do our baptism here in just a minute. I know that we've got to pull that thing out of there. We've got to get Miss, uh, Miss Molly out here and get her ready. Uh, go ahead and have that happen to where she's standing there and ready, and I'll give you a few things to think about until then. Dennis Hastings' mother passed. We love Dennis. 97 and a half years old is how old she was. Tomorrow at noon, I believe it is. Dennis, where are you, buddy? Is he in here or is he out? He's out in the floor. Oh, he's out. Okay, that's right. He's doing his job out there. Uh, I think it's at noon at Cranston's funeral home. Talk with him to get the details. Is that right, Miss Charlene? 12 to 1. And then at 1 o'clock, I'll be doing the service. So that's tomorrow, everybody. Let's support them as we can. Today at 5 o'clock, the men need to meet to discuss building plans, several important expenses, along with uh, going about doing our missionaries, making sure that we have funds available to them. We do understand we've lost a few missionaries because of certain things related to COVID, and one, because his wife has died. So we're asking God to help us pick up more missionaries. And Brother Stover happened to come in right then, and we're like, man, it's just about great to be able to have a missionary come in. So we're looking at our trajectory this afternoon with the men, and then we'll vote on these four or five missionaries that we'd like to take on. Can you imagine that, taking on five missionaries on that? It's incredible. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. All right, my friends, let's do something. Why don't you do the first video hymn, and that way it'll give us a second to get ready back here. Stand together, and we'll sing together this first video hymn, my friends, which is Each Day I Live, and that'll give us time, okay?
I think you all realize there's something very special to me about Molly. Very grateful for the Lord bringing her into our lives. But Molly believes that she was saved after she was baptized. And so what do you know about that scripturally, everyone? If you believe with all your heart, you can be baptized. The scripture says, and so if you do baptism before you believe with all your heart, then you just have that. That's all it was, okay? And so now she's going to actually be baptized, knowing what she's doing, understanding that this is a representation physically of that death, burial, and resurrection that takes place in your heart when the Holy Spirit of God comes and saves you and takes away the old man. Well, he doesn't take away the flesh, but he certainly does dominate and take over and have you. And if it be that you're saved in that way, bless the Lord Almighty in heaven. Molly, have a seat, if you will. Molly, are you sure that you're saved? Yes. Now you are? How can you be sure? Yes, you believe the Bible. Who saved you? What did he do? Good. Do you know anything about the hyperstatic union? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> According to your profession, faithful what the Lord Jesus asked me to do, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of the dead. Praise the Lord!
much going on this morning, and we are so late in the schedule. Today at 5 o'clock, again, the men, please meet with us. Also, understand this. With all that's going on, choir, why don't you come up and get into your place, if you will, those who will. Right here, over here where the seats are, some of you are brand new. Just go ahead and sit up there, if you will. Grab a seat wherever you can find one. And hang on, all right? Tuesday at 4 o'clock, we're going to go out and evangelize and talk to people about Jesus Christ. Wednesday at 3.30, we're going to go out and evangelize and talk to people about Jesus Christ. Thursday at 4 o'clock, we're going to go out and evangelize and tell people about Jesus Christ. Friday at 2.30, we're going to be at the high school preaching in the open air telling people about Jesus Christ. Saturday at 10 o'clock tomorrow, we'll go and do this station. How many of you know Jesus is coming back very soon? Yeah. Hey, yeah. It's important for us to tell people. We plan to do the only thing we can do to hear, hear. Rather than in heaven. You know it's the only thing you can do here that you can't do in heaven? Everything else you can do in heaven. But we cannot witness in heaven because it will be all done. You know? Missions meeting Tuesday at 530. Please understand that. And we will be singing a video hymn in just a moment. But actually I already sung it. Let's do the choir, okay? Let's do it. I am so grateful to you all for bearing with us this morning. Kind of a chaotic morning. But what a blessing. Hey, have a stand, if you will. Have a stand. I'd like to say we Sign up sheet for the wedding on this side. 
signed up to see RSV for the wedding reception. They get saved. Oh, the day is saved. My goodness, this was November the 6th. Sign up for that one too, okay? Well, I tell you, families are forming all over the place. <laughs> so I'm grateful for how the Lord is working in our hearts. So that's the sign up reception, not just for Christine and Eric. Where are Christine and Eric, by the way? Over there. Hey, get with Christine for this Sunday so that you can get that all taken care of. Uh, let's do this. Father, I thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the realities of it. We thank you for the offering that you're about to receive. Help us, Lord, to honor you in the way we behave and what we do for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go right ahead. Amen.
appreciate you. You're something, brother. You really are. He brought up the idea that we may need a defibrillator here in the church or something. Amen. And uh, I just think we ought to pray about that yeah. and think about that. Everybody's got a defibrillator at home. Uh, please consider that, okay? It's needed here at the church. We certainly want to make sure that we take care of the needs of our own people. Mary Willie is going through a rough time. She'll be having surgery here, and she's on a fixed income. I think she just makes a little over $600 a, a month, maybe not even that. And she's going to need some help. In the future here, she told us way ahead of time, and I appreciate that, Mary. So we're going to be looking off into the future, maybe helping her through that difficult time. She's been faithful here. I'm grateful for her. And keep Tom and Kim in prayer. On the 25th, is that correct? Yes. The 25th of October. October 25th. Right. Kim and Tom are moving just here, I think, to the center of Seaford. Yes. Yeah. We live just off of Baker Mill Road right now, and we're moving in town. So they're going from Baker Mill Road, which is right back in here, over to the center of town. And she needs 10, 12, 15, 500 people to help her, right? We have a U-Haul, we just might need some We just need some extra hands. How many of you say October the 25th, I think I might be able to do. What date is that? That's a Monday. That's a Monday. Monday the 25th. There's some people that say, I can do that, depending on the time of the day. So your hand up for that, you. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. There's five right there. We'll see you about it. We'll continue to announce it. Maybe we'll get the 500 we're looking for. Okay. Huh? Can you get a hold of the names where they can yeah, I sure will. Hey, Zeus, go around and start asking people about that. Not right now, but in the future. Go ahead, gentlemen. Go ahead and sit.
Look at Isaiah, if you will. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. How many believe you remember being born? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Born again. Where is my mom? Mom, they're laughing because they think I don't remember being born. <laughs> you, my mom says she remembers just fine. Yes. She remembers me being born. You know that. I didn't believe you remember being born. Raise your hand. Don't be scared. Let me see. One, two, who else? All right. There's three of us that are out of our minds, and that's fine. You know, Colossians 2 and verse 9 says, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Did Amen. you know that? I tell you this, Jesus Christ, I'm not sure how conscious he was of being born, but what? Uh, you know, I look around at this crowd today, and I think, this is a miracle. I mean, this is, you look around and say, That's good. well, I don't, but you don't know. You just don't understand. All the families I've got in my head that usually are right here in front of me, every single service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, to look out and see you filling the pews is magnificent. Amen. A miracle to me. That's right. But much more of a miracle was the birth of our Lord Jesus. Amen. How does that look? Did Christ at some point have a body before his earthly body? Hey, Pastor, I'm not sure if I know. Well, Colossians 2 and verse 9 again says, In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. Listen to this. Bodily. Listen. Bodily. All the fullness of the Godhead. What? Bodily. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2 says, If angels, if angels, have you ever seen an angel unaware? How many of you think you might have been entertaining an angel at some point and didn't know it. So if you're hand up, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's a whole lot more nuts here than I thought. <laughs> you know, at first there's only three of us, Michael, and now Amy, there's, there's much more of us. Amy and Michael sort of knew, they're like, yeah, these people are kind of funny. They're, they're <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm so glad they're here. Boy, what a great family they are. So many others, too. Some I don't recognize. These dear people in the very back, I love you. So glad you're here. If there's anything I do for you, let me know. But Hebrews 13, 2 does say that there have been those who have under, in, entertained angels unaware. So I guess the question in my mind is, if angels are allowed to have a body and come and present themselves, and you entertain them unaware, was Jesus Christ, never having been born of woman, <laughs> Was Jesus Christ offered that same allowance in the Old Testament? Yes. How many believe that Jesus may have been offered that same allowance yes. in the Old Testament? Amen. Do you believe in what is called a Christophany? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. I sure do. How many think they may have seen one of those angels yes. unaware? And in that case, knowing and seeing that, I want you to keep all that in mind. Look at Isaiah 45, starting in verse 1. Thus saith the Lord who is anointed, <coughs> to Cyrus, whose right hand I behold to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two lead gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Now you tell me something. Does that sound anything like a likening to Jesus Christ? I'm not here to tell you Cyrus was Jesus Christ. I'm not here to tell you he was a bodily form of Jesus Christ, but it's just interesting to me that throughout the Old Testament, there'll be pictures of people that give us a picture of Jesus Christ. Have you noticed that? Who is it that opens all things and nothing will shut those things? Who is it that shuts all things and nothing will open those things? Who is it that is able to undo kingdoms? Who is it that will rule and reign for a thousand years? Tell me who that's going to be. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Look at verse 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in some of the bars of iron. Tell me something. Who's going to make the crooked places straight? Yeah. Who's going to bring down the mountains and pull up the mountains? Who's going to do that? Yeah. According to the word of God, Jesus Christ does. Who puts his feet on the Mount of Olives? And it cleaves in two. Who does that? 
Yeah. Jesus Christ is very concerned about that hotel on the Mount of Olives. I've often thought about that. It's going to be a bad day for them, isn't it? I hope they got insurance. Verse 3. I'll give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Isaiah 45, verse 1 through 5, gives that picture of Cyrus. It was a picture of the anointed one. It actually says it in verse 1. What did he say? To his anointed. Thus saith the Lord to his. Listen. Thus saith the Lord to who? To his anointed. Who is none other than Jesus Christ? I'm here to tell you there are plenty of people that are anointed, but his anointed, the only anointed, is Jesus Christ. So, yes, I understand. I'm not trying to make Cyrus Christ. I'm just saying to you, there's so many pictures. How many know? There's so many pictures in the Old Testament of Jesus Christ. Things to remember about the Trinity here are so clear. Here's the title. Are you ready? All of that by way of introduction. Jeff, you got that in your head? Did you write it all down? Every single verse? Oh, you got it up in your new. Okay, very good. The title. How can God be three persons? Is it even true? Yes. Yes. How can God be three persons? It doesn't matter whether you remember if you were born or not. It doesn't matter if you look through the Old Testament and don't see the pictures that other people see. But I will tell you this. There are facts in the Word of God. One of those facts is that Jesus Christ is one of the three persons of the Trinity. Yes. Amen. God the Father is in that three persons of the Trinity. Yeah. Now, I talked with a Jewish person even this week. And I just want folks to know. I want all people to know. The Trinity is not a New Testament thing. That's right. Yeah. The Trinity is an Old Testament thing. Amen. We're going to look at that. We're going to study that. We're going to come to some conclusions about it. You know, Barb? Honey? Oh, she's out there doing the thing. Oh, back there. Hi, honey. How you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. That's one of our kids. Barb and my kids and I. What? What's that? Mark and Oh, Mark. <laughs> well, that's great because I was about to use you as an illustration. Barb and Mark and Jack and how many other? Seven other kids. And myself make up our family. Oh, God help us. But in any way, <laughs> those members of the family are just one family. Yeah. You know that? Right. How many of you just love that yellow part of the egg? You love it? I love it. I enjoy it. The white, not so much. But I like that yellow part. Yeah. But that white part, if you salt it just right, is perfect. And then you've got the actual shell of an egg. Right. Lewis like it did. Hey, then you've got that actual shell. You know what that is? It's just how many eggs? One, one. one egg. Yeah. You know, our Lord is just like that. In fact, he's giving you thousands of illustrations. My daughters are so sweet. I love them. Yesterday was Daughter's Day. You can get online, see on my page. I had a tribute to Daughter's Day. I put on a blonde wig. <laughs> My kids were not home. Everybody else was posting pictures of their daughters. So I put on a blonde wig and I went. <laughs> and I let everybody on Facebook know I love my daughters. I don't have them all here. But in honor of them, I put on a blonde wig. Because Elizabeth, stand up. <laughs> Elizabeth has on there. Her sister has on there. And Teresa wants to have on here. But anyway, <laughs> I want you to look at these three things and think about them with reference to the Trinity today. Number one, God is represented as only one God in the Bible. Amen. God is represented as only one God in the Bible. You can see clearly. Three persons, but he is how many gods? One. One God. 
And he tells us that. Look at verse 4. For Jacob, my servant, say, and Israel, my elect, I even call thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I'm the Lord. There's none else. There is no God beside me. I have girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Understand this, my friends. No matter what. If you know it. If you don't know it. He calls out to you. He desires to know you. John chapter 14, I believe it is, tells us it may be in verse 8. I can't remember exactly. But the Word of God says this. That the Holy Spirit of God is here to convict not just the people of God, but the whole world, world of <coughs> sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. There is a false theology going around that says that the Holy Spirit only deals with Christians. You say, well, Pastor, I believe that false theology until you just said it was false theology. Well, it is. Because the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit was sent to judge the whole world. That's right. And He deals with them. What does He do? He convicts them of what? Sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. Who does He do that with? The whole world. You understand that? Amen. So if the Bible says that the Holy Spirit Judges the whole world, understand this. The Holy Spirit, being one of the three persons of the Trinity, by God's will and in God himself, is just one entity. The Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ the Son, and God the Father, and they are one. But, he formed things in three ways. Did he? Look at Genesis chapter 1, if you will. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says in the beginning was what? The word. Well, it says that in John 1. But here it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. God being who? Trinity. Who do we know? This to be. Understand very clearly. Verse 2, you'll see these words. The earth was without form and void, and God was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God. Moving upon the face of the water. A lot of people say, oh, just God the Father made the world. No, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit formed the whole thing. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he says this, what? Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Why? Because he's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one made the world. Look at verse 27. It goes on. The word of God says this. And God created. So God created man in his own image. He the God created he him. Male and female created he them. Look at chapter 3 and verse 22. The word of God says in chapter 3 and verse 22. The Lord God said, Behold the man has become as one of us. What? Do, do, do you have wings? Well, then he's not talking to the angels. Right. Who's he talking to? <laughs> he's talking to himself. No, not us. He's talking to himself. Yep. Look. <clears throat> and the Lord said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. us. <clears throat> you getting this? Mm. You're seeing this already, right? The very beginning of the Bible. Uh, of the Bible. What is this? Ruazet. The Holy Spirit moves on things in the Hebrew. And Elohim, every time you see in Hebrew, I am, what does it represent? Jesus Christ. Plurality. I am, words are in Hebrew, plural, words. So Elohim is who? The God. The three is one. one. or Jehovah. He always has the physical aspects attributed to him because that is... Jesus Christ, my friends. Understanding clearly, man's creation is not God's, the Father's creation alone. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Look with me, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now get this. Look back at Isaiah 45. You ready? Here we go. Isaiah 45, this is what the Bible says in verse 6. That they may know from the right of the sun, from the west, there is none beside me. I am the Lord. There is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I am the Lord do all these things. 
drop down the heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let them bring forth salvation and let the righteous spring up together. I, the Lord, have created them all well unto him that strive with his maker. Let the potsherds strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou, or thy word? Ye have no hands. What? You know what? God has hands. You know who they are? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yes. That's exactly right. He hath no hands. No. He does have hands. No way. Our God created you. And Jesus Christ's fingers pressed in your eyesight. Hey! Out of the dust of the ground. Why do I know that? Because my God is a spirit, and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And here's what we get from truth and understanding here. Unless God has the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are no hands. There are no eyes. There are no physical attributes. Our God is both spirit and physical because Jesus is yeah. physical. The spirit of God is spirit. And God the Father is brain or yeah. head seat. Yeah. All right. Look at verse 10. Woe unto him that sitteth unto his father. What begettest thou to the woman? What hast thou brought forth? Man, you know, if you ever said that to your mother, I hope she smacked you into next week. <laughs> Well, you didn't make me into that. I'm going to tell you what. That woman went through more pain than you can imagine. You better watch your mouth, little boy. Look at verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons, concerning the work of my hands. Command ye me this. These great, awesome persons are one. Understand that when you garden, and I've done some gardening, how many of you know that? Some of you came over to my house yesterday and saw my destroyed garden. There are reasons for that. You'll know later all of the reasons for that, but I'm excited about the reasons for that. A gardener's process is unique, isn't it? When the farmer starts, he just puts a couple seeds in the ground. You know what happens with those seeds? They grow as they're watered and the sun comes. Plants grow. Here's another part of that. More hands-on experience takes place when you need to kind of get rid of the bugs off. Tell me, Brad, you need to get rid of the bugs once in a while? What was that thing you told us about that defends from bugs and such? You were telling me the other day at my house, like, defends something or, or I don't know. Beat them up bugs or whatever, I don't know. They've got all these brands, okay? <laughs> so then, you've got the lady in the kitchen. Or the man, depending on whether the chef is a male or a female. And they cook everything up. So what have you got? Well, you've got three processes here. One is not a hands-on process. That would be the Holy Spirit of God. A more hands-on process, that would be God himself using his intellect and his understanding. Finally... The real cook that brings it all together is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, without his death, burial, and resurrection, we are lost. Do you get that? Let me say it again. Without the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are lost. lost. Number two. God is represented only as one God, but he formed the things in three ways. Number two, God is represented countless times in three persons, but... He affirms his singularity. So, what do we say? Well, I'm saying this. He's three and one, and he's one and three, and he's three and one, and he's one and three, and he's three and one, and he's one and three, and he's three and one, and he's one and three. Do we get that now? <laughs> Everybody in here confused? Okay. Well, that's good. I saw Keith raise his hand, but he just uh, <laughs> forehead and all. Nobody's confused on this issue of the three and one, but look at this. Read on to verse 12. I've made the earth. This is your God. This is Isaiah 45 and verse 12. I've made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, look at this, even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their law, their host have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his way. He shall 
build my city. He shall let go of my captives, not for price, nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt, the merchandise of Ethiopia, of the Sabians, men of stature shall come over unto thee. They shall be thine. They shall come after thee. In change they shall come over. They shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee. And there's none else. There is no God. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself. O God of Israel, the Savior. Who is the God of Israel that is the Savior? Well, there's only one God. Yes. But that God is mentioned in how many people? Three. Get this. He appeared to Abraham in the form of how many men? Three. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh. He, he appeared to... Go with me to Genesis 18 and verse 1. Genesis 18 and verse 1. It would do us well to read that account before we continue. Genesis 18 and verse 1. What does the Bible say there? Starting out at the very beginning, the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mammon. He sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. He looked up his eyes and looked, and lo, how many men? Three, Three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground and said, My Lord! Wait a minute, what? What? Well, the three in one was standing right in front of him. And he knew who he was, and he didn't say, Hey, what's your name? Are you a different? Oh, good to meet you. Oh, it's nice to meet you. No, he knew it was the Lord. And now I've found favor in thy sight. Pass now, I'm not away. I pray thee from thy church. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched. And on and on it goes. Now get this, my friends. Do you sometimes feel the people you live with have split personalities? Yeah. <laughs> Do you? I see a bunch of people sitting there saying, well, the people I live with are sitting right next to me. So, <laughs> I'm really not going to talk much about the people I live with next to the person I all of us true. It's completely true. But, I'm not going to mention that right now because you're right now. Go to Genesis chapter 11, if you will. Genesis chapter 11. What does the word of God say? In verse 7, it says this. Go to... Let us go down and there confound their language. Who is able to confound the languages? Oh, the, the, the angels can do that. No, no. The spirits can do that. No, no. Who's able to do a thing like this? Only God. And he says what? Let us. Isaiah 6 and verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. Now see... A lot of people say, well, that Trinity thing, that's only for the New Testament. Is that what you're seeing here? Isaiah chapter 6, if you will, verse 8 says this. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send and who will go for me? Does it say that? No. 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 What does it say? Us. Who will go for us? Yes. Then it said, I hear a lie, send me. All the angels are like, Who will go for us? No, they're not. All the spirits. Who will go for us? No. No, God is saying, who is going to go for us? You know the coolest thing about God? His personalities aren't split. Have you thought about that? Everything the spirit wants, Jesus wants, and God wants. And all three of them have the same mind. You know something about yourself? You're in his image, Doc. Amen. I know you think you're out of your mind. You're beside yourself. But Dr. Bruce, you just want to do this, man. Each of you out there, at one time or another, feel a little bit down about how you are and what you are, don't you? I'll tell you, I've been down about this thyroid thing. It drives me crazy to think what I am. But my God and King has made me one, and I am grateful to serve Him. How many of you are grateful that our God... It's enabling you to singularly be his servant, no matter how you feel, no matter how rough it is, no matter how difficult the way, your God is there for you. Why? He, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, has given you all things. He's given you power. Go ye in the whole world and preach the gospel. All power is given unto me, Jesus said. It's up to me. And I'm here to tell you our Savior and our King will.
will give you all the power he has to yeah. let you go and do it. Now listen, my friend. God has represented as only one, but he formed things in threes. God is represented as all three, and yet he singularly affirms that he is one. And then third, God is represented as the Christ. Right. But they called him the angel of the Lord. They called him the angel of the Lord. Do you know that in Hebrew, each instance refers to the person of Yeshua, who is Jesus Christ. Look at Genesis chapter 16 and verse 10. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 10. Look it up in the Hebrew. Genesis chapter 16 and verse 10. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and it shall not be numbered for multitude. Who was that? That's Jesus Christ, my friends. Yeah. Understand this. In Genesis chapter 22 and verse 12. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 12, he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from Yeshua. Yes. Think about that. That will blow your mind. Lord, and praise the Lord. Listen to my friend. Listen to me, my friends. Our God and our King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is alive and well in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8. What does the word say? Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8. Again, you have to understand that there are two kinds of Yahweh as well. One of those kinds is in reference to the physical manifestation of the Lord. And so you'll see that as well. Yahusha. Okay? All right. Now. Logos also refers to the word. Look at this in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that is feeble among them. At that day shall be as David. The house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before him. Why? It's the physical representation of Jesus Christ. Would not David be that? He would say yes. You can relate to having a body, having that spirit. I love eggs. And I love the way that an egg looks. Look at Psalm 33 and verse 4. If you just understand, understand as you consider the things of God in this life, again, think about, think about this. Psalm 33 and verse 4. And, and there are a couple other texts I want to get to before I get to John 14 and verse 9. But 33 and verse 4 says, read it with me. Everybody read it out loud. Here, here we go. For the word of the Lord is right. And all of his works are not true. Who is that? L O G O S. Logos, right here. Who is right? Well, Jesus Christ is right. Who is the Logos? Who is the Logos? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Look at me here for just a second. Isaiah 40 and verse 8. Isaiah 40 and verse 8. And then we'll get to the good one. Man, these are all good. But look at this one that we're getting to in the New Testament in verse 8. It says, The grass withered, the flower faded, but the Logos of God shall stand forever. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Understand the plurality of God is seen here. Go to John 14. John 14 and verse 9. How many of you struggle with the idea that God the Father is God the Son? They're the same. Now, who in here might have had some mess around a little bit in your past with Jehovah's Witnesses? Jehovah's Witnesses believe in three gods. They believe that Jesus Christ is God. And they'll tell you that. They believe he is a separate God from God the Father, who is a separate God from the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that's a big, fat, stinking liar pants? Okay. Very good. Why? Because the Bible tells us how many gods is God? One. One God. Is Jesus a lesser God of some kind? No. no. Jesus is the same. Look at John chapter 14 and verse 9. The word says this. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? Yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He hath seen me, hath seen the... Say that again. He that hath seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? 
Believest thou not that I am the Father, and the Father in me, the words that I speak in you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. I started telling you a minute ago, I love eggs. I love, I love eggs. eggs. Just think about this for just a second. Isaiah 46 and verse 9 says this, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. If you love eggs, you've got to love chicken. You know that chickens have already inside of them 300 eggs the minute that they're born. Did you know that? They won't have one single more egg than what's already in them when they're born. Now, yes, they're microscopic. But each of those things, those little tiny things in them, are all they will have for their entire lifetime. You know what my God is? He's awesome illustrator. And he uses this throughout the whole scriptures. He says this. I am self-sufficient. I always have been. I always will be. There won't be more of me or less of me. I am who I am forever and ever and ever and ever. My God, the maker of the egg, the maker of three in one, the maker of every kind of illustration and every part of everything we do in our lives says to you, I am Jesus Christ. I am God the Father. I am God the Holy Spirit. And I come to you and I say, I formed you in my image. Yeah. And you are Amen. special to me. Amen. Yeah. And I love you. Yeah. Won't you come yeah. to me? Won't you love me as I love you? Yeah. What a God. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes and just think for a moment. Your three in one perfect God gave you a spirit. He gave you a soul. And he gave you a body. You are a trichotomy. The word of God says in Hebrews chapter 12. I believe in 5 and verse 12. Tells us that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, rightly divided. It, it, what it does is it cuts between the joints and the marrow. Listen to this. It cuts between the soul and the spirit. Mm. It, giving us knowledge of the fact that the soul and spirit are two different things. Your soul being very closely related to your brain and the spirit being very closely related to your nervous system. And of course, then there's your physical body. Hey, guess what? You're made in the image of... And he loved you so much that he reaches out to those who are made in his image. And he says, you're different. You're not an animal. You're not like any other creation. You are special. You're a human being. And I reach out through all of eternity. And I stick my hand out to you. And I say, will you come? Won't you come? Won't you come unto me? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Come unto me. I love you. I want you. I yearn for you. Won't you come unto me? Would you stand together, dear? Those of you who would come unto him, come now, won't you? Come unto him, walk down this aisle, allow your heart and soul to be brought into him in a right relationship. You say, Pastor, what am I doing when I come forward? You come and you grab a hold of my hand and I'll get you with a counselor that will make sure you fully understand what it means to know Christ. To not have to think about a sinner's hell, ever. Your God and King by the blood of Jesus Christ will come and save you and take you unto himself and love you like you've never known. And if you're here today and you say, I already know it. I've known him forever. Oh, my friends. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 that when you really get saved, you're a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you haven't experienced the real Christ life, then don't risk it. Don't risk it. Come and know the truth. Come and know it today. Won't you walk down this aisle? Won't you get full security today? Others have come. Workers are here. Others are here praying. Would you come and just pray? Christians, if you won't come and pray here, be praying in your pew, please. Perhaps you can't for some reason. I understand that. But pray right there in your pew. Right there where you're sitting. Right now.
Will you come? Others have come. Why don't you? Hey, give it up. Go ahead and do it. Whatever's holding you back, you say, you know, I need to be baptized. Walk down here, won't you? Hey, let the Spirit break forth on you. Let the Spirit break forth on you. Let Him in right now. Come on down. Say, I need to be a member of the church that preaches like this, that speaks the truth, that goes out and witnesses, that's honest about their approach to the Word of God. I need to be a part of a church like that. Come, if you will. Won't you? Anybody? Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come here? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to me? It's been an honor to be in your presence. Every time we open up this book and we hear straight truth, not the nonsensical applications of men, but straight truth from your word, the truths that are bound in Old Testament, New Testament writ, the entire thing, oh God, it causes our hearts to burn with great excitement, Lord. We praise you for it. Won't you be with your people throughout the day? Bring us back this evening as we enjoy a great time of worship and fellowship around the truths of the Word of God to hear our missionary, Brother John. I pray, Father, you'll bless in that service that it would be of incredible value to us and that you'd be glorified in that. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Focus tonight is on Germany. Great missionary. Want to make sure that you get that. Listen, we're going to take up an offering for Gary and Sarah Black. And so do this, my friends. I think maybe what we should do is maybe just have the ushers around with offering plates as you're going. They'll be standing back here with offering plates, maybe multiple plates. And that way, if you want to give something, you go ahead. Listen, don't feel forced, but we certainly want to take care of our own, do we not? Ma'am, I'll see you at 5 o'clock for that important meeting with reference to what we'll be doing in the future with some expenses.